Greetings, this is Jeff Riddle from Christ Reformed Baptist Church in Louisa, Virginia. This is an audio version of a book review that I have written. The book under review is titled Jesus Christ, subtitled His Life and Teaching, Volume 1, The Beginning of the Gospel. It was written by Metropolitan Hilarion Alfeyev, published by St. Vladimir Seminary Press in 2018. It is 561 pages in length. This review that I have written first appeared in the Midwestern Journal of Theology, volume 20, number 1, in 2021, and it's found there on pages 121 to 124. Here now is the review. This is the first volume in a projected six-part series Volume 2, The Sermon on the Mount, was published in 2019. It is translated from the Russian original. The Russian-born and Oxford-educated Metropolitan Hilarion, born in 1966, is a distinguished churchman and a prolific biblical scholar, theologian, and church historian, as well as an accomplished composer of sacred music. This polymath is also the chairman of the Department of External Church Relations for the Russian Orthodox Church, serving as something like an ecclesiological diplomat for his communion. This series is an overview of the life and teaching of Jesus as presented in the four canonical Gospels in the New Testament from an Orthodox Christian perspective. This initial volume, consisting of eight chapters, examines some of the key topics of prolegomena, to the study of Jesus and the Gospels, from a survey of the contemporary scholarly search for the so-called historical Jesus in chapter 1, an introduction to each Gospel, chapter 2, to an examination of Jesus' way of life and character traits, chapter 8, from a distinctly orthodox perspective. With the collapse of communism in recent decades in Russia and Eastern Europe, The Eastern Orthodox Church is experiencing an unprecedented revival in its traditional homelands, and it is even making inroads in the Western world. This book provides a unique insight into the Orthodox approach not only to historical critical study of the Bible, but also to the life of Jesus and the Gospels. This is particularly intriguing since, as Robert Letham has pointed out in his book, Through Western Eyes, Eastern Orthodoxy, a Reform Perspective, published by Mentor in 2007, the Eastern Church in its long history experienced neither the Reformation nor the Enlightenment. Metropolitan Hilarion suggests that gospel studies can be divided into at least five distinct historical periods. See pages 152 to 170. First, there was the writing of the gospels in the first century. Second, there was the time of the Apostolic Fathers in the second century. Third, there was the time of the ecumenical councils from the 3rd to the 8th centuries. Fourth, there were the 10 centuries from the 7th ecumenical council of AD 787 to the 18th century. The 5th period, starting in the mid-18th century up to the present, saw the development of rationalistic modern biblical criticism. At the close of the 20th and into the early 21st century, however, the author suggests that there has been what he calls a reverse tendency towards the necessity of seeing the Bible holistically within its tradition and not, quote, as some lifeless museum exhibit, page 166. The author is fully conversant with the most recent trends in Western academic scholarship of the New Testament and open to profit from them, yet also refreshingly cautious and critical with respect to many of its successes and unfounded conjectures. An example of this can be seen in his analysis of the Q hypothesis in response to the so-called synoptic problem. Metropolitan Hilarion concludes, quote, the entire discussion is based on nothing more than guesses and presuppositions. At present within the scholarly community, voices are growing ever louder in asserting that the Q source is nothing more than a phantom invented by scholars, end quote, page 63. It is also there in the affirmation of the traditional authorship of the Gospels, the full acceptance of their historical reliability, and their early dating. Perhaps most importantly with regard to Christology, 
This book asserts that Jesus and the Gospels must be understood in light of the ancient Orthodox ecumenical creeds. The failure of the modern search for the so-called historical Jesus to understand the Lord Jesus Christ from a confessional perspective has brought it into what Hilarion Alfeyev calls total collapse on page 272. It might be said that this book approaches the study of Jesus and the Gospels within what Craig Carter calls the Great Tradition. See Craig Carter's book, Interpreting Scripture with the Great Tradition, Recovering the Genius of Pre-Modern Exegesis, published by Baker Academic in 2018. It accepts the historical reliability of the Gospel tradition, offers harmonizing interpretations of any perceived rough edges, and is shaped by the traditional or pre-critical patristic reception of them. For these reasons, many conservative and evangelical Protestants will find much with which to resonate. At some points, however, Protestant readers might have their views challenged, as with the Metropolitan's textual arguments regarding Mary's virginity and whether or not she had other children aside from Jesus. See page 246. At perhaps only a few points will the Protestant reader suffer dismay, as with what seems to be thy naive discussion regarding whether the Shroud of Turin might provide any historical evidence as to the physical appearance of Jesus. See page 492. Even this, however, perhaps reflects the unique Eastern interest in icons and visual representation of Jesus and the so-called saints. At this point, it should also be pointed out that the book not only contains an expansive text, but it is also filled throughout with multiple illustrations from Christian art inspired by the Gospels and the life of Jesus. For many Westerners, Eastern Orthodoxy is exotic and incomprehensible. This book will prove helpful to Protestant readers as it provides them access to one of the Russian Orthodox Church's most influential intellectuals and leading churchmen, as he considers modern historical critical biblical studies in light of traditional orthodox understandings of Christ and the Gospels. The book concludes with the author describing the travels of Billy Graham to the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War to interact with believers and speak in churches, citing Graham's 1971 book, The Jesus Generation, Metropolitan Hilarion, and in the printed review, Hilarion's name is left off here, that was an that was a um, error in the transcription of the review, but Metropolitan Hilarion then observes that his own generation in the former Soviet Union was not a Jesus generation. He writes, quote, "In the 1960s and 1970s, few in the Soviet Union knew or spoke of Jesus Christ. His name was mentioned only in specialized literature, or uh, on rather scientific atheism." See page 534. End of quote. He then notes that today things seem to have been reversed. It is in the West that many are speaking of a post Christian age, while in the East there is what he calls, quote, a large scale revival of religious life, end quote, page 535. He concludes with this hopeful note, quote, the post Christian age will come only after the second coming of Jesus Christ. As long as the history of mankind continues on earth, Christ will continue to act in history. His divine countenance will always attract people, and generation after generation will become Jesus generations. End quote, page 537. Here ends the review. You can receive audiobook reviews and notes like this one, Word Magazine podcasts, and sermons by subscribing to Christ Reformed Baptist Church's sermon audio feed on iTunes by searching for Christ Reformed Baptist Church. For video material, you can subscribe to the Word Magazine channel on youtube.com. You can also find written book reviews, book notes, and articles like this one on my blog at jeffriddle.net.